Hi, I'm Brian Van from SportBikeRackGear.com. Today we're going to do some wrenching. We're going to put on a new set of driven DXS rear sets on one of my 2008 Yamaha R6s. I've fallen a couple of times in these rear sets. They've been on there a long time. I want to try something new. I've decided this time to go with the driven DXS. The point behind this video is to show you what we do when we put a set of rear sets on our motorcycle. Understand every kit's going to be a little bit different from every manufacturer, even from bike to bike. Okay, so this is not the end all be all gospel of rear set replacement. Use your service manual as a resource if you've got questions, right? Also, if you're not comfortable doing it, take it in to a licensed motorcycle technician, let them do it so it gets done right because it is important that it's done right. Another thing I want to tell you is anytime you modify your bike from stock, right? and you put on some aftermarket parts that are designed to work, say, you know, a, a range of six years, right, different, slightly different models, it's not always going to go perfectly smooth. Oftentimes, you're going to bolt them right on, it's going to be perfect, right? Other times, there are some minor modifications that you might have to do because, say, you're running a Kropovic exhaust, not a stock exhaust, or you've got a Graves exhaust. Everything's a little bit different, so be prepared for that. Leave yourself some time, and most importantly, be patient to work through any issues that may or may not pop up. We're here as a resource. If you've shopped with us, you bought the parts from us, we're gonna help you do that, right? If we know the answer, we're gonna give it to you. If we don't know the answer, we're gonna help you get it from the manufacturer of the part. It's important, we want you to have a good, clean result and be happy with what you got. To begin, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take off the rear sets that are on the motorcycle now, right? Got a set of graves on here. They serve me quite well. I just wanna try something new right now, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put on the driven. Bust that loose, pull the shifter. You can see here I'm using a DynoJet quick shifter on this bike. So I will not be able to utilize the shift rod they sent. Okay, I'm gonna to continue to use the shift rod that I have in place here with that DynoJet quick shifter. Let's go ahead and get this off. All right, now we're ready for reassembly. Driven did a good job with the instructions. They've got an exploded parts view, a recommended tool list, everything on here. Torque specs as well. I'm not going to use a torque wrench today. I wrenched for a long time. I've got a good feel for torque. If you don't feel as confident, utilize these torque specs. Grab a torque wrench. It's a good decision. Two things that are going to be important. One is. On all the structural fasteners, we're going to use blue Loctite. Some of the bolts that are used to assemble this, right, are countersunk, which means there's a lot of surface area between this bolt and the fixture that it bolts up. You need to put a little bit of anti-seize, right, in there. Otherwise, there will be a little bit of micro-corrosion over time. You'll go to break those bolts loose, and they won't want to come out. You'll strip the head. It's just a disaster. So make sure you use a little bit of that on those countersunk bolts. We're gonna begin by installing the structural mount first, the large adapter plate. I've got a little bit of anti-seize here that I'm using. Got my blue thread locker right here. What I did before I began this project too is I had a rough idea of where I wanted to go with these rear sets in terms of, of height and adjustment. Okay, there is a huge range of adjustability with the driven D-axis. So what I did is I've kind of got the rear sets set up where I think I'm going to want them right now, right? Once I get it all installed, I get them on the bike, I'm going to throw on my SuperTech R's, I'm going to jump on the bike, and I'm going to start to dial in things like my shifter and my brake lever right? If the pegs feel good at that point, then I'll double check all my fasteners, make sure my work is clean, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to ride the bike and see how it works. You want to take a few minutes to do that before you really commit to a long ride to make sure that you're happy with where everything is. You don't want to find out at your race, right, at your track day, or on your long street ride you plan with your buddies, 
that the adjustments that you've chosen are not going to work out for you. You want to be able to deal with that before you go out and you're committed to a ride. I'm going to go ahead and thread on the shifter. Okay, we are ready now for the heel guard. Once the heel guard's on here, it's pretty much going to stay in place. So I'm going to go ahead and put the Loctite on there. We're going to need to switch to 4mm Allen. Fasteners of this size, you do not need to go crazy on, okay? This T-handle is realistically more than sufficient for what I'm doing. Now, remember, before we ride it, we're going to double check that everything that we've done is clean, tight, and good to go. But for now, we've got our shift side of the driven D-axis rear sets ready to rock. Let's go over to the brake side. All right, we're here on the brake side. Now, this, this time, we're going to have to deal with the brake master cylinder assembly, right, and the exhaust hanger as well. Let's go ahead and we'll start by removing the brake reservoir. Anytime you install an aftermarket set of adjustable rear sets, you're going to change the position typically that the rear brake master cylinder rides in. Okay? Sometimes you'll have to move or relocate the reservoir a little bit. Typically, whatever you need to do that is going to be included in the kit that you've purchased. Okay, it's going to be a little bit different from motorcycle to motorcycle, but it's just one of those things that you're really going to need to be prepared for. This motorcycle has an aftermarket return spring put in place here. That's a Graves part. This was actually a, a former Graves motorcycle back in the day. It was raced by someone who was a whole hell of a lot faster than I am. So there's a few things about this bike that are a little bit different. There could be some compatibility issues with this return spring. I've kind of looked into this a little bit with this return spring assembly and the driven D-axis rear sets. Not a big deal. It's not really a super necessary part there. Let's go ahead and loosen up our exhaust hand. rear set bracket itself. All right, we're going to do basically exactly the same thing that we did on the other side. We're going to begin this process by mounting up the main support bracket for the driven D-axis rear sets. All right, this is going to be permanently mounted the first time. There's really not going to be a need to take this off. So we're going to go through the whole blue Loctite and anti-seize deal as we do not expect to have to revisit this. This should be one and done. For me, a big part of motorcycling, especially you know the track stuff, even the street riding, it's, it's taking time and making the motorcycle yours. You know, I mean, yeah, these bikes are all great in their stock configuration, that's cool, right? But they're all just the same, so it's really kind of vanilla at that point, and it's nice to you know, have all these options from all these different aftermarket companies out there where you can kind of customize your bike ergonomically and aesthetically and really take the time to make it yours. Just like we showed you on the other side, we're going to go ahead and as we're going here, it's just easier to get the brake lever threaded on when everything's disassembled rather than trying to rotate the rod for the master cylinder, right? Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to deal with the exhaust. And like I said, this is an area where, right, you're going to need to pay attention to what you're doing because every one of these exhaust systems is just a little different. Most of these aftermarket rear sets are going to be designed 
to work with stock exhaust, okay? Because that's kind of the benchmark, the baseline, if you will, for all these designers for these different parts out there. And the compatibility with some of the aftermarket stuff, right? There can be, you know, some minor issues that, that you can run into as you're going through the assembly process. Okay, so just be, be aware of that. Be ready for it. The Graves exhaust with the driven rear sets on this bike, I did find that there, I had to, to kind of veer a little bit from what I would normally do. And if you notice, I put the actual fastener through the exhaust bracket, thread spacing outward. And that was because of the position of this particular bracket. If I didn't do that, and I let the threaded portion go, you're going to be too close to the swing arm. And that is going to be no bueno. We do not want to be too close to the swing arm. Brake lever. Definitely going to put some Loctite on that. I mean, look at this as it's coming together. This is definitely some good looking kit. Now mounting up the last piece of the puzzle. Okay, we have our brake fluid reservoir. Now that we've changed the position, right, you can clearly see just mounting it here, yep, it's not gonna work. We're, we're in a completely different position than we were before. Driven supplies a bracket with this kit. Some of the R6 subframes have a hole in it. Mine happens to have a hole in it already that allows you to utilize this bracket. And essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to mount this up like so. And that'll relocate the reservoir for us. Okay, we're done for now. The rear sets are on the bike, both brake and shift side. I've got the brake reservoir is installed. Everything right now is tight with the exception of the shifter and the brake lever. We need to adjust both of those things. In order to do that, you're gonna have to wear whatever boots or riding shoes that you normally use. Put those on, get on the motorcycle, and then begin to actuate the controls. Just sitting there, you should be able to get to a pretty solid position, right? Where you'll be ready to tighten them up and then go out and take the motorcycle for a ride and evaluate the position that you have everything in. It's a good idea to do that before you either take a long ride or before you head off to the racetrack for a track day or a race weekend so you know that you're in a good spot. Remember, we did not lock tight these structural bolts on either side. Once we've got everything dialed in and we feel comfortable that we are in our final resting spot, okay, then let's go ahead and take the steps necessary to lock tight those fasteners in place so the job is finished completely. That's it. The Driven D-Access rear sets are on the bike. Questions, comments, feel free to comment underneath the video here in the comment section. We're going to do this with a couple of different brands too because every brand is a little bit unique onto itself. This is what it takes to install a set of driven rear sets on a 2008 Yamaha R6. I'm Brian Van, sportbiketrackgear.com.